Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to a man who clearly hasn't turned on his heating yet, and it's December. My name is Evan Edinger, and yeah, I'm actually fairly certain I spend more on the energy costs of lighting my space than I do heating it. But hey, I like living in the Blackpool Illuminations, okay? I take my lighting very religiously. And speaking of religion, I actually saw an article in The Guardian this week. Oh boy, interesting one. Really hit the timelines here. England and Wales are now minority Christian countries, a census has revealed. Let's dive on in. I actually had heard about this originally because human waste paper basket Nigel Farage had brought it up to be like, this is ruining Britain. And... Of course, of course he said that. But let's go into the nitty gritty because I actually find this quite fascinating. For those of you unaware, every 10 years, a census takes place in the UK as a way to find out what the population is like, what ethnicity they are, how they identify, uh, things such as this. But it's quite interesting to see just how much a population can change, not just in terms of their genetic makeup, but also in terms of their belief structures. Things come and go, fads come and go religions, it seems, as well. According to the recent census from 2021, it says that there was a 17% fall in people identifying as Christians in a 10-year period. That is massive. Nearly one out of every five people that identified as a Christian in 2011 in the UK now says, nah, not me. Just in case I accidentally say UK like I just did there, it's England and Wales. I think Northern Ireland might skew this a little bit. So in 2011, we had over 50% of the UK identifying as Christian, whereas now we have under 50%. No one religion seems to be beating out the other. Every single one is now under 50%. It's not a majority religion. Now everybody is under the majority. Everybody's different. There's a bit more diversity there. And the religion you guys got to watch out for that is absolutely sweeping this competition and has gained the most followers in the last 10 years, no religion actually. Wow, they've gone up by nearly 15%, which is interesting. Obviously, causation and correlation, not the same thing, but we've we've lost 17% from Christianity, and we've gained 15% in no religion, so could have been a bit of crossover there. And we've also had a near 2% increase in the people that identify as being Muslim. So that is an interesting one. Now, I don't think this is going to come as a surprise or a huge revelation for anyone living in the UK for at least the last five years. I think most people can sense a slip in religious followings. Census? Census lit. Sorry, I just wanted to throw a pun in there. But, I mean, the Archbishop of York, Stephen Cottrell, wanted to remark on the census results, and he says, This throws a challenge to us, not only to trust that God will build his kingdom on earth, but also to play our part in making Christ known. Which is by far one of the best responses to this I could have ever imagined. Very political type of response. Basically, a journalist goes, Hey, uh, basically 20% of people aren't following your religion anymore. What do you got to say? And he's like, listen, God was like, I know you guys can do it on hard mode. That's okay. Cool. Like, you know what? I respect it. I respect the optimism. You know, it's dropping. He's like, it's harder, but that means that we've got even more work to do. You know, I, you love to see. It. Interestingly enough, he followed up by saying, well, people are no longer just automatically identifying as Christian. However, they still follow a specific set of values to live by and seek spiritual truth. Yes. I don't think that necessarily means they're Christian, but... I guess he's trying to say they might not identify as Christian, but they're still good people. I respect that. However, the humanists, and if you're unaware, humanism is like a religious non-religion in a way. It's not, you're not really religious if you're humanist. It's kind of like we shouldn't need a old book or the fear of burning in eternal damnation in order to do the right thing. We should just do the right thing because it's the right thing. Correct me if I'm wrong, humanists. A friend of mine got married at a humanist wedding and that was kind of the vibe that it gave off. Now the CEO of humanism, which is I guess their way of saying the Pope, uh, they've come out and said, one of the most striking things about the census results is how at odds the population is from the state itself. No state in Europe has such a religious setup as we do in terms of law and public policy, while at the same time having such a non-religious population. I think that's very important because I'm actually going to be doing a part two to this video where we look at the laws of Britain regarding religion because they're a lot they're a lot more interesting than you'd think they were. And I feel like it's one of those where most British people be like, yeah, we don't really agree, but it's tradition. So we'll subscribe for that. That'll be coming in the near future. But yeah, interestingly enough, the UK has quite a lot of religious laws being like Christianity is cool. But the country is not as religious as you'd expect. And here in this map of England and Wales, we see that, wow, South Wales, absolutely not believing. If you're south of the valley, you, you can't see God anymore. You're out. <laughs> Most people in South Wales considered being religious, but then they carefully decided not to. Okay, there, they, they went for it. Mm -mm. Wait, Brighton and Hove? Oh, I mean, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and then of all the parts of London, Islington has the highest proportion of people that are non-believers. Weird. I don't know why, but I thought Islington would have actually had a higher proportion of people following Christianity. Huh. And then uh, a small place called Ashfield. I actually have never heard of Ashfield before. So I'm going to quickly Google 
Ashfield. Let's. What is Ashfield all about, guys? A local government in Nottinghamshire, England. The population was 127,000 of non-religious heretics. The district is mostly urban and part of Nottingham. Yes, but I want to know more about Ashfield. Is there any fun, fun facts? Anyone famous from there? Wow, this is the shortest Wikipedia page I've ever read. Anyone from Ashfield? Big up. <laughs> the only thing on this Wikipedia article is that they have a council building. Wow. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I wouldn't be religious. I'd be too busy going to this beautiful <laughs> premises. <laughs> and wow, the places with the least number of non-believers, so basically the most amount of people that are following some sort of religion, are Harrow, Redbridge, and Slough, which honestly makes a lot of sense. If I lived in Slough, oh God, I would definitely have to pray to get out of there. <laughs> to some sort of God. <laughs> just imagine every day living in Slough, just like, God, Please, whichever God will allow me to escape. <laughs> Probably best if you believe in a God that doesn't work so quick, but works rather slow. The Office of National Statistics, or ONS, have cited there are differing patterns of aging, fertility, mortality, and migration that are possible reasons for the change in the religious profile of the countries. Duh. It's like, hmm, okay, well, mortality. We've had some people die. A lot of them were Christian, and they're not necessarily getting their newborns to be super Christian, so that makes sense. Immigration. If we're getting a lot of migrants in that follow specific religions, then obviously that's going to affect it. Fertility. Are people becoming religious when they when they get pregnant? Is that like, oh, baby coming. Goddamn, Jesus, I love you. Like, is that actually happening? And then aging. I guess as you get older and you begin to grasp the reality of your situation, that life is so fleeting and short, and, well, you get scared of the unknown. Not to get deep there, but I guess that makes sense. You're going to turn to religion. <laughs> ah, and here's the map that definitely rustled Nigel Farage's jimmies. It says here, the populations of Leicester, Luton, and Birmingham are now greater than 50% black and minority ethnic. Now, if we're looking at these census data and the population across both the entire countries of England and Wales, well, then it's 81.7% white still, but in specific urban pockets, you're going to get different diverse quarters. Also good to note that The Guardian actually points out that in between the previous two censuses and, is it censuses? Sensei? My sensei. <laughs> the recent decade has seen a slower increase in the mixed rate population growth as opposed to the previous decade. Now, the National Secular Society is basically using this as a way of saying it's official. The UK is no longer a Christian country and basically going on to say that the laws deeply embedded in the UK state are deeply unfair and undemocratic and unsustainable. Now, that is for part two of this video where we look more at those deeply embedded religious laws where the Church of England is basically wrapped up in everything. And is it an outdated thing? Thing? Is it something we should keep as tradition? That is for you to comment in the comment section in a very kind and understanding and empathetic way with some nuance, but also for my second video coming soon. And I think one of the best ways we can look at this data and attempt to interpret it is basically like a statement coming from the census deputy director who says that despite the rising ethnic diversity, nine in 10 people across England and Wales identify with the UK national identity, and that's eight in 10 in London. So basically what it means is no matter what ethnic origin you have, no matter what religion you follow or don't follow, nine out of 10 people still identify as being British, as being part of that UK national identity. Unless you're from London, then you're only eight out of 10, which is a little bit funny, possibly one of two reasons. One, London is full of people from different countries, from immigrants. And so it might just be that way more people in London identify with their country of origin, or it might just be that London is kind of like a country in itself. And so a lot of people that have lived there for years and years and years and years are like, I don't really consider myself of UK national identity. London though, I'm a Londoner in it. Bruv, it's Tuesday. <laughs> However, now more than half of the population has identified themselves as British only. So there is still a majority British population, if you want to say it that, d depending on your definition of British. Now, I know we've had a chat on this channel before about national identity and how one chooses to identify as the British moniker, where I myself, even though I'm an American, also hold a British passport now and I do view myself as British. Not English, though. I just felt like there's something off with that. Like, I don't really consider myself English. I don't know why. I don't know how to describe it. Britain more describes me. I personally identify with that. Obviously way more Londoner, but yet I do still view myself as British, which is interesting because if we look at the stats, more than half of the population define themselves as British only, and it's gone up 206% people that identify as British, but people that identify as English is down 72%. Wow. That's quite a lot. Now, people that identify as English and British is still up 67% which makes sense. That's not necessarily me. I don't identify. However, there, there I am right there. UK and non-UK up 143%. I view myself as American and British pretty much. And it's kind of sad to see here, but the number of people that identify as Welsh is down 7%. 
We need a little bit more Welsh pride in the comment section, please. But at the end of the day, I am just one guy. So I'd actually like to hear from you guys. If you live in Britain, do you find any of this data surprising at all? Do you personally identify more as British than English or Welsh or anything like that? I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Thank you very much for tuning in for another Sunday video. Every Sunday, you know me, I make a video, whether it's deep like this or maybe some silly little quiz or I don't know. I'm, I'm recently ending things with ukulele because I thought it was fun. Either way, hope you're keeping warm and I hope you're doing well. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Goodbye. I'm sorry about so many of my puns in this video that didn't England. I tried. <laughs> People in the UK, they don't find themselves that much religious. Don't sue me if you don't like this video. Don't be litigious. <laughs>